Oh, and he's walking oh, back. <laughs> he's my guy. Jeez. Oh, I see him here. <laughs> oh! Way to go, Miles. Way to save Gotham. If you recognize this man, then you know we're in for a wild ride. And if you don't recognize this man, well, you're in for a wild ride. So this is Neil Breen, licensed architect in California turned filmmaker. At the time of me making this video, he has written, directed, and produced five different films. And he's just announced and release the trailer to his sixth film, all of the films in which he plays the main character. Now, I've always been a fan of bad movies, you know, so good they're bad, so I've actually seen the five movies that are out right now. But now that there's a sixth movie coming out, I wanted to go back and rewatch all of the other movies to kind of refresh myself and catch you guys up on the Neil Breen universe, I guess. But I'm not doing it alone. No, no, no. I'm gonna drag my friend Josiah to uh, watch everything with me. Check this guy out. Yeah, right place, right time. Right place, right time. Link in the description. Every, yeah. Great podcast. Yeah, we, yeah, we have a we have a podcast. We do. Ha we happen to have one. And before this point, he's never heard of Neil Breen. So sorry, Josiah. Anyway, let's just jump right into his first film, released in two thousand and five, Double Down. Do you remember this movie? Now that I have like reminded myself which one it is, key points. Okay. So the film starts with what I can only assume is stock footage of like sweeping shots through the mountains as the opening credits appear. Just in case you didn't know who made the movie. Sure. Mr. Breen. Mr. Breen. Just in case you didn't know. Sure. Because I, I was about to ask who made it. Right. Yeah. We are then introduced to our protagonist, Neil Breen. Sorry. Aaron Brand. <gasps> That's him. <sighs> Dude. My name is Aaron Brand. Oh, and yeah, you heard that right. <laughs> Voiceover. Just like all of the best F-tier movies begin. Neil, however, takes it to the next level. All of the dialogue for the first, like, 15 to 20 minutes of the film is just voiceover. We don't actually hear the first in-scene lines until, like, 20 minutes in as he talks to a naked woman while he's naked huh? in the pool with her. We'll get to that in a second. Anyway, we are introduced to Aaron Brand. I always thought I was doing the right thing and preparing for life. I was the first in my class in college in computer science. He's the best at everything. He was the first in his class at computer science. He was a pilot for the Air Force who won many, many medals. I joined the military and became a fighter pilot and won many medals for distinguished service. Many medals. Not just one. This guy. That one. <laughs> yeah. The dude wearing a wife beater with no muscles. Yeah, that's Crouched in a rock. And now is currently a secret agent spy mercenary. And we learn all of this because... He says so. I'm now a covert agent, mercenary, for any nation that wants Oh, that guy? <laughs> I don't know about that. Hey, at least Neil is following the age-old rule of filmmaking, tell, don't show. I think I got that wrong. High-waisted jeans, my guy. Look at him daintily. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, what I'm, that's why I'm saying that. <laughs> minor spoiler warning. Most of the visuals in this film are either stock footage or Neil slash Aaron Brand kind of frolicking through the mountains. Look at this parkour action. The first 10 minutes of the film is just him climbing around and bragging about how good he is at everything. The fact that I became so individually electronically powerful scared my government as well as others. Yes, using a laptop will do that. <laughs> just check. Yeah. Just check. Controlled it. access <laughs> to the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Wow. Even from my little simple, brilliant setup. Him sitting on a rock. <laughs> yeah, it's a setup. He's a secret agent who donates all the money that he makes from killing politicians and terrorists to orphanages. I've been giving away the money to children's support charities all over the world. I can do better for them than most mismanaged and dishonest governments can. So if you can't tell, my orders from government bad. Shut down the Las Vegas Him Strip. good. Him good. <laughs> but, oh yeah. <laughs> my orders from another country are to shut down the Las Vegas Strip for two months. He's a terrorist as well. I'm past the mainframe. I made it to the motherboard. <laughs> governments don't I mean, the dare. Firewall's down. Me. I've let them all know that I've planted biological bombs in seven major cities around the world. Okay, so he's a terrorist. <laughs> yeah, he is. And release a biological attack on the population which will kill 
hundreds of thousands. <laughs> I thought he was the good uh, guy. Yes. yes, of course. If you mess with me, systems will be I'll activated. kill a whole I'll city. kill everybody. <laughs> the force shield will cause death if an intruder gets too close. Dude, this guy was Rick before Rick and Morty. <laughs> a terrorist who controls everything in the world with four or five laptops and a few phones, all from the back seat of his car. Three laptops. Oh. <laughs> He's got three oh. of them. I deal directly. None of them are on. <laughs> Why does he carry a gun if he can always have a force the world? Shield? You have a point. And then we get a shot that lasts way too long. Yes. Mm. What's the point of this shot? I help orphanages. But if you cross me, I'm bombing that orphanage. <laughs> nah, this is weird. Too long of a shot, buddy. Yeah, that was like a 15, 20 second establishing shot of the dam there. Neil, we can tell you're trying to reach that feature length film length. And then uh, Aaron, the protagonist, the good guy, poisons a lake. Okay, yeah, that's actually just pollution. <laughs> that's just... Wow, that was fast. I thought he was a good guy. <laughs> no. What? Ah, uh, yes, the emergency pack he did, remember? The emergency the laptop. laptop. <laughs> now we can have four. <laughs> Two, three, four. That's it. You just had to make sure it still worked or something. Check his messages. Dude, what did he stash there? Check that man's hard drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. You gotta put your laptop all the way out there. You, you got some like, incorrect... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Is that the dead Is guy? this why it's rated R? I think that's a body bag. I thought this was a love scene. My bad. Someone's going down. Come back to me. Oh. Come back to me. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, whoa, 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 Kids! Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the execution of that could have been a little bit better. That was just creepy. So here we meet Aaron's love interest and fiance. We met when we were seven, and it was love at first sight. We loved each other since. Debatable. That's real wife or is that an actress? What do you think? You think this man's married? <laughs> oh, no, I thought you were going to say it's his wife. Okay, so it's an actress. <clears throat> oh, dude, he wrote in kissing. Oh, we got to film it again. It makes me really uncomfortable how they keep cutting between them and then footage of kids. Like, I get what you're trying to say, but I feel like it was just poorly executed. And as Aaron and his fiance are having a good time doing whatever the hell this is, the bad guys pull up with a plan. What plan, you may ask? It looks like he actually filmed it. That's what I'm saying. Is, it, so does he have a high budget? Or like, Oh, whoa. <laughs> I love being with you. What? I love you. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, no. Get down. <laughs> oh, geez. So his fiance gets shot instead of him. Now, apparently these assassins only brought one bullet. <laughs> ah, and after watching his fiance get killed. Neil really puts on a performance, a sorrowful, mournful performance. He nutted. We get our first shot of Neil waking up on the floor next to his car with the words help me written on it in blood. This is a tough watch, man. <laughs> Waking oh, up message, message, dude, look up! Help me! Yes, you heard me say first. This happens a few times, and no, we never get an explanation as to what that means. But what he does explain is that he consistently changes his identity to stay off the radar. To show that, we get a entire take of him replacing his license plate. I'm constantly changing my identity. Okay. Yeah, we needed, we needed to see the entire process of yeah. him taking and changing <laughs> place. We needed to see that. <laughs> and to further the point that he's a master of disguise, we see him do a Superman-style quick change in the public bathroom. We then get some establishing shots of Las Vegas, because finally, after like 20-something minutes, the setting changed. Enjoy it while you can. I'm about to end it all. He's going to kill oh, himself. <laughs> he's going to blow up the whole place. Oh, you're right. He's a terrorist. We then get the most alien conversation I think I've ever heard. I just arrived in town an hour ago. It's nice to be here working with the agency in another assignment. <laughs> okay, this is tough. We haven't located him yet, but he's very near. 
very close. For some reason in this movie, all of the medium shots that take place during conversations are low angle shots with nothing but the blue sky as the background. All of them. It's almost as if the conversations weren't actually shot together. I mean, it doesn't look like it and it doesn't sound like it either. He is planning something very big, bigger than 9-11, Whoa! <laughs> this came out in 2007, dude! You know, he looks kind of like George Bush. This is chemical biological. Just saying. How difficult would it be to do the simple, like, A, B, over the shoulder shot looking at each other? It's simple and it works. But no, we get this, and this, and this. Time for the first Neil monologue of the movie. I'm always amazed at how governments all over the world are so concerned about nuclear missiles and nuclear bombs. The reality is that chemical and biological weapons can be much more destructive to societies and economies. I don't even know who he's talking to at this point. He's not facing the same guy. They're both looking the same direction. And I don't know what any of this has to do with the job that he was just given, but hey, we get it. Biological weapons are powerful and something like that. Who is that for? He just got hired to kill somebody. What does any of what he just said have to do with that current job? What is he talking about? He's just saying things I can promise you. He's just saying big words, government, Guerrilla nuclear war, <laughs> guerrilla warfare, uh, chemical biological warfare, More biological, modern warfare. Less <laughs> This is a very long and tracking never. shot of him walking away. <laughs> a few long establishing shots and some stock footage later, Aaron wakes up at his car, part two. Bro was How having did we a go trip. from Vegas to here? Was that all a dream? <laughs> he was off the perk. <laughs> and now he's preparing to attack cities. I've got to prepare for the attack diversions. The attack diversions? Is he doing something that's worse than 9-11? Or is he going <laughs> to stop someone from doing something that's worse from 9-11? My face... <laughs> I think they're saying he's... Okay. Neil pulls up to the function, packing heat. He's prepped and ready to kill old Ben Kenobi. Oh, look, he's old got man. two guns. One here, one here. You don't look like a terrorist to me. Who I think is the guy who is gonna do 9-11 part two, but Neil is still planning something nuts. He's still doing... He's gonna do something crazy, but he's gonna kill this guy first. What's with the music? Is he God? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Buddha. It almost <laughs> tripped. <laughs> However, before Aaron Brand can complete his job, the old man trips, hits his head on a rock, and freaking kills himself. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's done. No. He doesn't have to kill him. But in his final breath, he leaves Neil with a magical rock. I was drawn to him. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. His spirit. Hold on. Yeah. Also, there's no blood on his head anymore. <laughs> yeah. Continuity, Neil. <laughs> Great stuff. I am the one. Say again? Oh! Yes. Come back again. Come back. All legal. Climbing time. We then get our third wake up with the bloody help me car scene. Oh. What is he doing? How does he keep waking I'm up? so alone. <laughs> and then... Where this, are this, you? This is tough. Who? Who are you looking for? The dead old man? Your old fiance? Oh, what? Yes. Mom. Is there life after death? Your parents? When did they have anything to do it? Uh, since when were you looking for your parents? He rubbing his knees. <laughs> <laughs> now we get a few more medium shots of the sky, but hey, we also get some cool shots of Neil modeling in the water. Oh. You know he thought he looked sexy in those. So we're now introduced to one of Neil's secret agent buddies who invited him over to dinner with his family. But of course, Neil has to ruin it with another little monologue about something that nobody really cares about. You know, the public perception of what we do for a living really constantly amazes me. They think all that we do is drive around and get caught up in spectacular car chases and huge buildings blowing up and wild gunfire. Uncle Neil so might be uh, one <laughs> too many drinks in. <laughs> Our daughter Megan was just diagnosed with brain cancer. Oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whoa, dude! What a bomb to drop! I guess he really had a one-up Neil's boring monologue. Damn! Wonder how he's gonna take that one. That's the rock the old man gave him, by the way. Stop touching her head. Yeah, man. I wouldn't I wouldn't let my kid near. That was uncomfortable. I think I need to clear my system with a long shot of Neil climbing a hill. 
He's running. <laughs> the cuts are crazy, dude. It's like location to location to scene to scene. It, that's wild. Perfect. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that rock really helped you climb. I've been given this incredible power. Tonight, I believe I cured Megan of cancer. What? Oh. And now I want to help you. Oh, so he's, he's God now. Oh, yeah. Also, that little magical rock did give Neil magical powers, so... Neil Breen, as the writer, wrote himself as the character who was then given Christ-like powers, so that's... <sighs> Thankfully, before everything gets too convoluted and confusing, we get brought back to the main heart of the movie. Neil being the amazing hacker he is... Oh, back on that laptop. Camping in his car. Uh oh, oh, toes. <laughs> For free? <laughs> Hey, yo, put those dogs away, bro. <laughs> and hallucinating his dead wife. Exactly what everybody's here for. It's me. Give me the president. Contact has been. <laughs> <laughs> what is that shot? <laughs> I think and I hope that that shot was the president answering the phone call. And I like to imagine that that's just how presidents answer phone calls. That's my favorite shot of the whole movie, by the way. It only goes downhill from here. One anthrax cell later, and we are back in Las Vegas. Aaron meets with his friends again while getting spied on by somebody else. More medium shots of the sky. <laughs> so Aaron is given a new job, assassination. What do you have for me this time? Cryptography? Fixing an election? It's all easy. Network? He and said it, not me. Nah, nah, it, like, <laughs> it, it, we're not. He would never. You're a genius. The best. But you know that. No. He wrote he, that. Yeah, yeah. Neil was right in that line smiling. And then he says, you're the best. <laughs> well, you already know on. that. <laughs> Ten inches long. And of course, since Aaron Brand is the best person out there, we all know that there's no way he's going to botch this job and accidentally kill the wrong people. The lady who was spying on him gets shot by a sniper that's off screen. Oh, <laughs> she died. And then Aaron notices the bug that was planted on his car earlier by the lady with the shopping cart. I couldn't let them notice that I saw that diode being planted on my car. Nice. You need a knife to get that off. He missed. <laughs> and then he touches it anyway. <laughs> and now Neil begins his genius assassination plan. Step one, steal a car by paying off the valet guy. Before they finish <laughs> Why did he give it to him like that? I didn't know it was that easy, but thank you. I'm definitely taking note of that. Step two, pretend to be a driver and pick up the targets who just got married. Step three, poison strawberries and then give it to the couple in champagne. This kills the husband. We'll be at the hotel in 10 minutes. You're not driving, dude. <laughs> I don't feel well. I don't feel well. <laughs> and he's dead. Yeah, he's gone but only knocks out the wife. Step four, when the wife wakes up in her drugged state, convince her that you had sex with her and got married to her. Where am I? And who are you? We're in Las Vegas. Hey, last night we went to the club, danced a lot, drank a lot, laughed a lot. Oh, so he's gaslighting. Had <laughs> sex out by the fountain. Then we went down to the strip and we got married. Who are you? <laughs> no, that's... We are married? That's actually not cool, man. Not at all. Ah, that doesn't seem like much of a, a good guy move. Ugh. I feel like Neil should go to prison just for writing this into the movie, but... All right, you probably guessed by now, but these were the wrong people. What do you mean I picked up the wrong couple? Shit. <laughs> so he deals with this by just dumping them on the side of the road, leaving the wife with her corpse husband. Yeah, did he kill her too? I think he did. Here's your husband. No witnesses. <laughs> That's kind of... Dang. No? Oh no, she's not dead. But what happened to the couple that he was supposed to kill? Well... Oh yeah, I think they're just chilling. <laughs> asleep on they, a they, rock. They actually, they took it, dude, they took it. Yeah, they took it full. No. Oh, there's, oh they're dead. Suicide. Suicide? Suicide pact. They knew what was coming. They killed themselves, so hey, in the end, everything worked out. Incredible assassination plan and incredible execution. He really is the best. Now back in the desert, Neil breaks a prop. And then, dude, you messed up the prop, <laughs> dude. And then runs into the hills for a shot that lasts way too long. L. Oh, he's getting out of there. L plus cringe. How long is this shot gonna last, you think? 
about 10 more seconds. No way. Seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it's good. That, that's always good. Ten still second going. shots are, st and it's still going. So that's even better. Okay. He chats with his dead fiance for a bit. I find myself Dude, having what's dreams happening? and nightmares when I sleep. Are we tripping? And waking up on the ground, I sweat. I'm so confused and depressed. We are confused <laughs> and depressed as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, uh, we're back in Las Vegas, baby. Time to put that anthrax to good use and begin this plan to biologically attack Las Vegas, I guess. How was he gonna start this plan? Well, by secretly planting the anthrax on an innocent bystander. Oh, and he's walking oh, back. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> he's my guy. Smooth moves there, Neil. Very smooth. This man is so smooth, I bet he could hire a prostitute to help him with an assassination, but not get sex. I'll pay you $100. Only a hundred bucks? This is the actual on, phone baby. call when he was trying to convince that lady to be in the pool. <laughs> no sex. Sure, but I want to see you afterward. Thank you. Is he hiring a hooker? Absolutely. I knew it, you sly dog. Now, I don't know who he's after at this point, but let's see his next assassination plan. Step one, steal a car by hacking into it. That doesn't look suspicious at all. <laughs> Step two, call the guy on the phone. I want a private meeting with you now. And then step three, pick him up like you're his Uber. We should listen more, because I'm so lost. <laughs> what does the prostitute have to do with this, though? Well, she's the distraction. <laughs> just killed him. Yeah, that's pretty much it. She just gets him to look one way so that Neil can... <laughs> I don't know. You're probably wondering, who is this guy that we just assassinated? Well, time for the big reveal. Who's your friend? Oh. It's Saddam Hussein. Holy shit, it's him! I, I still have no idea who that is. Who's him, though? His nose that he's with me. I'm a marked man now. Let's go. Doesn't really sound like Aaron Brand is that good at anything, really, actually. He even got the prostitute killed! Bro! It's so easy for this terrorist chemical sale activity to happen in any town like this. The people around here are all transient tourists. They don't pay attention to what goes on around them. They're all preoccupied with seeing the sights and having a good time. Good to know, I guess? Dude, do you want us to, like, keep an eye out for illegal terrorist chemical sales? I thought that's what your guys' job was as agents. What am I? I mean, okay, thanks, I guess. I'll try my best. These people having a good time. <laughs> yeah, they should be worried about chemical warfare. These tourists in, in Las Vegas seeing the sights. Actually, idiots. They don't even think about the hackers. <laughs> the chemical warfare. The biochemist The biochemical uh, terrorism. We now travel just outside of Las Vegas to a Breaking Bad style anthrax drug exchange. You already know what's coming. More medium shots of the sky background. So Neil pulls a fast one on these anthrax sellers. He drops his drugs. It broke open. Run. Uses this time to take the anthrax and then has his men execute the anthrax dealers. So kill them. That was it. Good plan. Now begins his attack on Las Vegas. Sorry, wait, one more scene of him climbing through the hills. Oh yeah, and an ambush and killing of some off-screen baddies. Didn't mean to disturb your lunch. scene here. <laughs> oh! Now, if you can't tell by that scene or the one in the beginning or Aaron Brand's character as a whole, Neil Breen really wants to be an action movie star. We even get the classic action movie trope of a shirtless scene. <laughs> this is what I was waiting for. Come on. Oh, and just in case you didn't believe that he was a decorated hero, we actually get to see his fully decked out uniform. Sorry his fully decorated sleeveless jean vest put your damn <laughs> yeah you that, that, that's that's, that's what shape. decorated military members do is they put their things on a sleeveless denim jacket that's where that's where your medals go star, the medal for gallantry in action and i've never been so proud of our troops 
Yeah. I had you no mean yourself? <laughs> what is he rubbing his titty for? <laughs> and by the way, I've never been. I've never been more proud of our troops. Let me just say, I've never been more proud. I've of never been our more proud of our troops ever. <laughs> so remember a few scenes ago when Aaron Brand healed a little girl of brain cancer? Well, he didn't. <laughs> no, that's impossible. What? How can that be? I cured her. I cured her. I can't go on with this. I can't go on with this. I'm an American. I'm an American. I love this country. So for the longest time, I had no idea what this little tantrum here had to do with anything. Um, so I actually went to the IMDB summary page and uh, let me read it to you. Back out in the desert, he gets plagued by more visions of his dead wife, and he starts yelling and hitting the ground, saying, I can't go on with this. I can't go on with this. I'm an American. I'm an American. I love this country. He then tries to stop the terrorist plot that he started. So there you go. After beginning a terrorist plot on Las Vegas, he then realized, hmm, maybe it's not the best idea to kill tens of thousands of innocent people, especially in my own country. Took you a second there, buddy, but I'm glad you kind of took a look inward and decided to, to take out the worst in you. Forgive me. I thought he was gonna kill himself. Oh! Yeah. Whoa! Is there like a chip in him? Oh, I, I think you're right. <laughs> They've been tracking him? Wow, oh, you're right. He was gonna kill us all. Okay. That's not what I meant, but okay. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. What happened? I don't like that. To us. To me. What do you mean to us? Where did I go wrong? Being alone in a car with a kid, that's yeah. where. And driving out in the middle of nowhere with him, too. Because he's gonna go show him his secret laptop. Number four car, wake up next to it with the help me blood on the side of the car. Let's go. This movie's called Double Down, right? Double Down, yeah. Why? <laughs> I couldn't tell you, dude. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know Neil thought he was looking sexy in that shot right there. He had the fingers through the hair. He was kind of doing a little bit of that flexing motion and like a little bit of that face going on. I mean, hey, if I'm gonna write a movie that I'm gonna star in, you best believe I'm gonna try to make myself look as sexy as possible. <laughs> at this point in the movie, he's gotta be an expert at like running up and down hills. He's probably got his footing just perfect and there's no way he's ever gonna... <sighs> All right. Yeah, that would hurt. You that was your... not that bad, brother. Right, bro. So I think we're in act three now. I really don't know. It's hard to tell when the entire movie is paced like a fever dream. But now we're introduced to these old politician looking guys. Las Vegas, here I come. Now you'll be just as alone as I am. That, that's some incel type shit right there, Neil. So you're probably wondering, how does Neil plan on stopping this huge biological attack that he set in motion? Um, step one, type on your computer a little bit. <laughs> on the side of the uh, freeway. <laughs> yeah, that's the littering, dude. He just dumped all the empty tuna cans. Oh, back to hacking real quick. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. Then call your agents and the politicians using three separate phones at once, and then just tell them how to stop it. You need to do what I'm going to tell you immediately to prevent a national catastrophe. But it's maybe too late, unless those are his diversionary attacks, which are still catastrophic, by the way. Go to Code Red. Oh, that's how bad it is. I'm so depressed and confused. I've done all I can do to stop the attack. You did the attack. <laughs> oh, look at that, the symbolism. But also still littering, again. Well, yes, yeah, still littering. <laughs> so, time for his plan B. Find the magic rock. You know, the one that the old man gave him, the one that didn't heal a little girl of brain cancer, that one. And then the movie ends with him carrying his dead fiance into the distance. But also, he's not. I think you're right though about him being schizo, cause... <gasps> oh no. At least he finally let that little boy get away. That whole thing was kind of creepy. What does any of this mean? I have no idea. Something about corrupt government or like 
biological warfare, but he's also a terrorist and schizophrenic. But hey, as far as I'm concerned, Neil Breen's Aaron Brand has earned himself a Sigma card. Opinions on a double down. I think I've now left having watched this movie a little more mentally ill. The movie gave you schizophrenia, by the way. That's just, yeah. I should have told you, it's a side effect of this movie. You know, uh, I do hope that the lady who was playing his girlfriend got therapy after this movie, <laughs> because that was kind of rough. I never want to see this again. I don't want to hear about this again. Having said that, I cannot wait for the second movie. Yeah, so check out our podcast, check Right Place, out. Right Time. Link in the description. Right there. Bye. Bye.